In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us put ourselves in the presence of the Lord. Lord, graciously give us your Holy Spirit. Guide us from within. Give us your light, your discernment. Enkindle our hearts with the fire of your, of your love. And we ask you this through the powerful intercession of Our Lady, who is always present among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and in the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, good evening, uh, everybody. Uh, this lesson is a um, slightly different lesson from the uh, previous ones in this course, um, reading and studying uh, St. John of the Cross. Um, although I gave plenty of advice throughout the course, and now the course, I think it's now more than three years probably this course is ongoing. Um, I, I, I haven't looked when it started exactly which year. And um, throughout the course, I certainly gave advice on how to use the course, um, uh, etc. But I would like to dedicate this lesson. You might say, why haven't you given us this lesson from the beginning? Well, I'm giving it now take it, I will place it in the beginning of the course and I will try to place it at the beginning of every uh, playlist uh, in the future when they will be um, uh, public. Um, they exist, but they're not uh, public. So uh, this lesson is about um, how to make use of um, this course. This course is about reading and studying St. John of the Cross. Um, it has um, a goal, uh, we would like to achieve certain goals, and there are also um, some uh, warnings, I would say, uh, and we will see throughout this uh, presentation uh, what to do, what not uh, to do with um, this, um, this course, okay? So there are plenty of things, uh, you, you might be surprised, but there are plenty of things to uh, mention and I will try to go through uh, all of them uh, right now, okay? So, um, first and foremost, the goal of uh, this course, uh, what is the goal? Uh, the goal is to make uh, obviously, the thoughts and the teaching, the doctrine of St. John of the Cross, uh, to make it uh, known. That's that's uh, the obvious thing. Um, in the way uh, I'm working, uh, I'm trying. So this is I'm trying to address the goal now. The goal number one, first point. What is the goal of this course? Uh, so you can deduce from that what is the use uh, you can make of it. So um, I'm trying to make his thought be known. And also, uh, while I'm doing this, I invite you to sense a little bit the method he is using. He's using essentially the Holy Scripture, the Holy Scripture in order to um, give us this teaching. It's very unusual because um, we think when we read the Scripture that we don't read the Scripture in the same way. So... I often stop and say, look how he reads the scripture, um, the depth in which um, he reads the scripture. And you discover, obviously, and this is between the lines, that he is himself placed or um, he's experiencing a light. And it is under this light that he can see the scripture. Of course, he, he we take it for granted that he's advanced. Um, he's united with God and so forth. So uh, he went through all the different stages. He doesn't mention that. I'll be coming back to that. But uh, we take for granted that what allows him to read the scripture is um, in this um, 
this place where he is, the degree of transformation in which he is, which allows him to see things that we don't see. So always remember this, uh, pay, pay attention to that point. Uh, when we study, this is a point, always in, under the, the goal of the, the, this um, course, we try to read the text word after word, word by word, what he's saying. Uh, as you notice, I have the Spanish and the English, and very often I check and sometimes I amend the English, I offer some suggestions, or simply I put the English word, the Spanish word, and I try to find um, an explanation of it. I try to uh, put it into context and explain uh, um, what he means by that. Sometimes the author, Central of the Cross here, coins an expression like desnudez, for instance, um, and I try to explain it. The word exists in other authors, but he coins it in a certain way. Uh, okay, so word by word, uh, each word has um, a meaning, uh, like the word solitude, I under underline that. It has a different meaning. And the more you are advanced in spiritual life, the more various words become synonymous. And I, I did underline that. So we try to read the text. And as I always say, we try as much as we can not to project our understanding of the word on the text, but we try to gather what uh, he says, um, uh, the meaning he, 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 he means uh, uh, when he uses this or, or, or that word. OK, so as I said, we try as much as possible to avoid the projection, which is bring my thought, my understanding on the of the text of the words on the doctrine uh, to project it. Uh, it's rather to wait and receive. So there is also a method of, of reading implicit in uh, what we're doing. Uh, so this is also as part of the, the goal of the course, uh, to, to learn how to read the text and not to rush into conclusions or projections. Um, there is another dimension uh, is uh, in our study, which is to show the implicit dimension uh, in the text. There is an implicit um, heavy um, or, or uh, quantity wise it's there um, um, and I try always uh, to show uh, this as much as possible of course as much as my knowledge of John of the Cross can reach um, is to show an experience of his text to to show it okay so for instance um, if I'm talking in a certain place if I am placed um, commenting um, Ascent of Mount Carmel for instance uh, Dark Knight and hopefully uh, the rest. Um, I remember uh, the text, the meaning he gives to this or that word, what will happen after, and I bring in this implicit dimension if you want. So the knowledge of the rest of the work is very important, and I try to do that as much as possible. Um, another point also um, in the implicit or what is be present uh, in the text is the knowledge of the expressions that he's using. Uh, you notice sometimes I say, but this expression in English doesn't exist in the time of St. John of the Cross. You see, um, like the word experience, like the word um, uh, to be conscious of. Uh, these expressions are modern, so they're not uh, of his time. Uh, so to know the words he's, he uses and also the meaning of these words uh, then, especially that he uses a lot this scholastic philosophy and theology. Uh, which we tend today to use less and less. Uh, we use more uh, modern uh, expressions, uh, modern philosophies and modern theologies. So this is dangerous because we can not uh, misread what, what he is saying. He studied philosophy, and I did explain once how um, the, his study of philosophy can allow him to reach, uh, when then he, he addresses a theological point or a deep theological point, spiritual point, point to be able to reach uh, that point. There is a video just on that um, in the course. Uh, you can find it in the uh, fifth uh, section, uh, which is Dark Knight Book 2. Uh, at a certain point, you will see how uh, philosophy influences uh, spiritual theology. Um, he read certain authors, um, Dionysius the Arupagite, uh, sorry, Pseudo Arupagite, 
um, he read his short uh, text on uh, mystical theology. It is present in his mind constantly because there is a clear distinct distinction. Um, God cannot be perceived by the sense, cannot be perceived by um, the, the mind, the conscious mind. And this teaching is constant in all his uh, works. Despite the fact that he tends to say, I don't lean on authors, I don't lean on this, I lean only on the scripture, but in fact, this his reading of uh, Dionysius is, is very clear on, on that point. Um, he quotes other authors, he quotes Thomas Aquinas sometimes, um, the books that are not from Thomas Aquinas, but in his time they were um, of Saint, thought to be of St. Thomas Aquinas, that's fine. Um, he quotes them, um, one time, I think, in, in Living Flame, um, there's an entire um, page or two uh, of quote, quotations from St. John of the, Saint, uh, Saint Thomas Aquinas and also um, uh, toward the end of um, um, uh, Dark Knight Book 2, he uh, quotes St. Bernard, uh, St. Thomas Aquinas and, and so forth. So it's very important to be aware of the light under which he sees and reads and understand. And this light, of course, belongs to the stage where he is, and therefore it makes it very difficult for us to understand all what he says from the beginning. It takes time. It takes also our journey to step by step start to understand certain things. You see, that's proper, um, integral to um, a spiritual theology. Uh, you, you cannot, um, and even Teresa of Avila says, the person who doesn't have the experience will not understand me it will look like gibberish for, for for this person you see so it is very important to understand that when he talks there is a light there is a perception of things due to the depth of his experience and this of course opens um many things makes him to see things in a certain way and of course when we read we don't have that at all and we wonder sometimes what is he really uh saying and why is he saying it this way so you need to remember that. So patience is very important. Patience is very important. The more we progress, the more we find things. And we avoid also um, projecting uh, our experience on the text, saying immediately that this is it. Because sometimes they look as like an early experience, while in fact they are a deeper experience. I want to develop that. I did develop it uh, sometimes during uh, the course. <clears throat> Another point uh, which surprises um, the uh, historian, the person who knows um, uh, how he lived and, uh, and, and what was important for him. Uh, Our Lady is a little bit absent in his uh, writings. Explicitly absent, but not implicitly absent. So this is, um, I would say, the most hidden part of his teaching. We don't see enough Our Lady. We have just two or three mentions of her, they are very deep, very profound, uh, and we are left with just wondering um, how can we place her and so forth. And I do, uh, from time to time, do mention that, and this is of course my reading, I uh, respect other opinion here, opinions here, uh, I think that when he talks about the purity of faith, um, it's, he has in mind uh, the perfection of or the archetype, the archetype of the realization in spiritual life, and, and it is uh, Our Lady, of course. So he finds in Our Lady the, the perfection of what he um, is uh, would like to talk about uh, and so forth. So let us remember um, that it's not because she's absent explicitly that in his mind and his heart uh, she's absent. Um, I do sometimes use the what I would call the triangular um, uh, method of um, understanding, and by triangular, I mean that we have a John of the Cross, Therese of Avila, and Saint Therese of the Child Jesus. Um, they belong to the same spirit. The three of them are doctors of the church, and they sometimes shed an important light or complement uh, what each other say. It, it is absolutely clear that without St. John of the Cross, we wouldn't have a correct interpretation of Teresa of Avila and of St. Therese. But in the same time, St. Therese of the Child Jesus is the embodiment of his teaching. I'm not the one, the first one to say that. There are other um, uh, authors um, who, who mentioned it. I, um, I can mention Father 
Francois Marie Letel, who uh, always said that she's the embodiment of the incarnation, but certainly Father Marie Eugène also thought the same. Father Louis Guillet, all all of the three of them are Carmelites. So it is interesting when you have this. I understand you. For you, it could be a preconceived idea, but inside of a certain circle in, in Carmel, um, you'd find it very natural um, to to know that Saint Rise of the Child Jesus is the embodiment of uh, what he says or um, a sort of discernment offered of, of what he says. And I do mention that um, um, quite often, especially the more we, adva we, we are advanced, the more it becomes clear. Um, uh, this, the, the distinction between what is happening deep inside of us and the, uh, and the fact that are we feeling it or not? And St. Therese of the Child Jesus is the example of that, that she doesn't feel it, but she knows that something very deep is happening. And that was her prayer when she read St. of the Cross at the age of 17, um, since 17 years old. She said um, to the Lord, I want all that I'm reading. She was reading Spiritual Canticle and Living Flame, which are, uh, are of course, very advanced. I want all this to happen to me. And toward her, the end of her life, she says, um, it doesn't matter if I feel it or not, but what matters is, is it realized, yes or not? And this is a fundamental principle of discernment. And um, it's important to, to remember uh, that. Um, so St. Therese of the Child Jesus is an illustration. It's, I would say personally, the perfect illustration of his teaching. And it's good to keep that um, in mind otherwise. Otherwise, we could read what he says um, in, a, in a completely erroneous way, uh, expecting to feel or to go th through certain experiences that he's describing. And if we don't have them, we are disappointed. While in fact, it's not uh, necessarily the, the case at all. Okay, <clears throat> now you will find also another point. All this is about the goal. Uh, it's, it's a combined um, elements uh, that makes the goal of this course. Uh, another goal also is the constant desire to uh, see in John, St. John of the Cross how, how he reads the gospel, how he embodies the gospel, how can we find the gospel in what he's saying. And you constantly find the gospel in every, at every page um, uh, we read. So it's important also to remember that uh, you are reading an author. He wrote 500 years ago. But is he important to you? Uh, to which extent could he be important to you? Remember that, in fact, he has a special reading of the gospel, a very deep and uh, wholesome way of reading uh, the gospel. This point is very important. And as I, uh, as I said uh, earlier on, um, uh, pay attention to the way he reads the gospel. It's not enough to read the gospel. It's important to see how he reads the gospel when he talks about the old man and the new man, uh, uh, when he uh, interprets how we need to uh, lose our life, um, uh, die, uh, and so forth, uh, how he reads the mystery uh, of um, uh, redemption uh, applied to us, the Paschal mystery rather, uh, death and resurrection, how he reads that on a practical level uh, every day. Now, globally, uh, when we read St. John of the Cross, I uh, would say that I'm using the same method. I, I learned from um, Father Louis Guillet, the Carmelite, uh, Carmelite um, uh, father who uh, died in 1992. He's a French Carmelite. Uh, I knew him personally. Um, um, it's, it's like a floating attention uh, where you can, uh, you are trying to, to see, to sense the um, semantic field of what, the meaning of what he's saying. Not the words, the semant semantic aspect of the word, but the semantic aspect of the meaning, uh, which, which means what? It means you try to understand what he means and how the connections are established in the text and with other texts or the passage and the other passages. So that's very important. You have this sort of uh, faith attention or, or um, put over the text, sensing what he's trying to say and seeing the correspondences uh, elsewhere. So, of course, we need very humbly to be in prayer. We need very humbly to try as much as possible to put ourselves under uh, a similar light uh, uh, of his. And of course, it could take years. 
in order to be able to understand what he is uh, saying, okay? So this is for a, a very quick, rapid uh, understanding of what is the goal of uh, this um, uh, course. I might have, I might have uh, forgot one, one or two points. If I remember, I will mention that, but this is what I was planning uh, to say. Now, second point is this course is an explanation of a text. And by this, what are what 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 does it imply? Imply that it's not a spiritual direction. It is not a spiritual direction. Saint John of the Cross is not giving us a spiritual direction um, while we are attending the lesson. In the sense that this the lesson explains a stage, but to think that I am in that stage. And to think that what he's saying is up, uh, should be applied on me, this is another deal. It could be the case. You could be having this assumption. It's your it's your choice. But you need to be very careful. You need to be very careful. Because spiritual direction is something. And the text of St. John of the Cross is something slightly different. It is useful, but not complete. Because spiritual direction applies the doctrine to the case at this very moment in the life of this person okay so remember it is not a spiritual direction offered to you even though you might be very well tempted to say oh this is what i'm going through fair enough but to for you to deduce this immediately uh i would i say be prudent be prudent because to rush into conclusions and say, oh, yes, it looks the same. Well, there are plenty of things that, looks this, that look the same in spiritual life in different stages. So let, let us be careful here. So it is important to refrain from applying the doctrine on ourselves without the help of a good spiritual director. I understand you might be having difficulty to find right now a spiritual director who, uh, who can understand uh, you, that's fine. That happens all the time. But to rush into th that that um, application of the course um, is a bit, could be even dangerous sometimes because you will put yourself in a, in, a, in a situation and God knows how you can come out of this, okay? So remember, the spiritual direction doesn't look only the general doctrine but look at the case needs to know the person needs to know the history the spiritual history of the person and then sense or, or, or and try to guess what is happening and the, the the function of spiritual direction is not necessarily to say to the person where the person is but the function of spiritual direction is to give the right advice for the person where the person is okay now in the same under the same point, which is it is an explanation of the text. This is the second point after the goal. Um, it is not a complete, I, I said this is not a spiritual direction. Number two, under that uh, explanation of, of the text, um, this big number two, if you want, <clears throat> it is not a complete teaching in spiritual theology. Like if you say, St. John of the Cross taught me spiritual theology. When I studied St. John of the Cross, which means I completed my formation in spiritual theology, no. Although I rate extremely high uh, the teaching of St. John of the Cross to the point that I consider that one cannot really be properly trained in spiritual theology without having understood at least the main uh, points of the doctrine of St. John of the Cross, still it is not a complete teaching on spiritual theology, and certainly not if you are reading one book only. If you are reading one book, it's one access, one angle to, uh, to, a, to a situation, uh, to a stage in spiritual life, and it's only that angle. He doesn't claim to explain everything. Uh, you see, uh, when uh, St. John of the Cross talks about the uh, um, ways of praying, for instance, um, he, he says, you go and look at Therese of Avila. She explains it better than I do. He says that. This is in the spiritual canticle toward, um, I think, toward the end. He says that, no? He said, there are other people who explain that point better than me. So you need to be very careful. Uh, remember also that, uh, essentially, 
what he's talking about is rather linked to contemplative prayer. But it doesn't mean that he's addressing all other issues in spiritual life. So it is not a full course, a complete course on uh, spiritual theology. And his specific angle is rather under contemplative prayer. Uh, he gives the core of uh, recollection, if you want, of a prayer of recollection, if you want, what you find in Trees of Avila. But you have really to read him a lot in order to be able to find this core. Okay, uh, It is better expressed in Trees of Avila. He has his way of explaining it, and it is extremely beautiful. Uh, how uh, faith for him is this movement of recollection. But, you know, you need a lot of experience in order to, to spot the places and put them together and see that there is a proper teaching here that he's offering us on how to pray. Okay. He doesn't offer different degrees of prayer. Uh, but he, he, as I said, he sent us to Teresa of Avila. But he talks about rather this movement of the, this act of faith, and he pursues the development of the uh, this um, act of faith. Okay, so <clears throat> so be careful here. Uh, what is uh, the text? What is his goal? And what uh, we are uh, we can take from uh, this uh, teaching, and uh, what we should avoid uh, uh, doing. Okay. Um, now, another point, it's a very small point, but it's still very important. You need to discern when you read St. John of the Cross between, uh, because sometimes he describes what is happening to the person and experience, but you need to, yourself to discern between what is perceived and what is not perceived, what is experienced, what is not experienced. Because he, he speaks a lot when we you will we will see when we'll be studying spiritual canticle, for instance, or in living flame, uh, you will have the impression that the person united to God is like swimming in in, in consolations, in beauty, and this and that. Uh, so the assumption will be, oh wow, that's that's incredible. Uh, while in fact it's not exactly what he's saying. So discernment here is important. To distinguish between what is perceived usually, and what is not perceived usually in spiritual life at all the stages that uh, he is describing. This changes a lot in our way of reading St. John of the Cross. So the use we will make of the description of things that are happening deep in us um, is a very prudent and sp special uh, use. Um, um, when he describes what is happening in our spirit, uh, how our spirit participates into God's uh, being and God's operations, uh, you might think, oh, oh, well, uh, I, I'm supposed to experience this, while in fact you might not have no experience at all, like in the sense not feeling anything uh, at all, while, in, while what he describes is still happening deep inside. So you see, if you don't know this, well, then that's a disaster. Why? Because all the entire book of Spiritual Canticle and the entire uh, Living Flame book, uh, Living Flame of Love, will be read in a way which could be disastrous. Um, it, 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 it will um, foster um, illusions, a lot of illusions. Okay? If you have questions while I'm talking, please don't hesitate to stop me because um, this... Uh, use how to use uh this course is 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 for all so if anything i say is not clear please do stop me i, I might not see uh you raising your hand so please grab your mic um in case now <clears throat> um along the line of what we said which is discerning between what is felt and not what is not felt is uh i would say his personal experience, um, his, as, as an individual, uh, as a person, um, is hidden. Is hidden. Uh, he doesn't talk about himself. He doesn't put himself in the text. Um, he's very discreet about his own experience. Not the case of Teresa of Avila. Teresa of Avila all the time speaks about herself. Even sometimes she doesn't mention that it's her. She says, I know a person who, and in fact, the, the person she knows who is, is herself. Okay. Uh, now, <clears throat> this means what? Um, how do we read the, the use we make of uh, this teaching? Um, 
often, especially for instance, in his prologue about the spiritual canticle, he says, I'm offering a great span of um, experience of graces that one can receive, but it doesn't mean that um, uh, everybody will receive all the graces that I am describing. You might receive one or maybe you might not receive, but that's fine. So you need to be careful also here. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't received that. It means that this, that. You see, uh, to move from the doctrine to apl applying it on ourselves, this, I think, is the main line, red line, I'm trying to underline here in, in this lesson. Uh, to be very careful. Don't move swiftly between what you are uh, uh, reading in the text, what we are reading together, and your own um, deductions and experience about your, your own experience, okay? So, <clears throat> uh, if he talks about all the graces or the majority of the graces that one can receive, um, he's not talking about one specific person, he's not certainly talking about you. So you need to be careful. Um, yeah, so as I said, he, he, is, hi he is hiding. He doesn't appear. Uh, uh, he leans on the scriptures. As he said, I will not lean on my experience. I will lean on the scripture. Fine, but still, it's him reading the scripture. I did mention Our Lady. All this under the same point here, which is uh, his personal experience, his individual experience is, is uh, hidden. Um, Our Lady, who has um, a, a huge place in his life, um, seems to be hiding. And I did mention that uh, before. Uh, um, as I said, she's a little bit the archetype of the realization of uh, what he's describing. Okay. Now, another point. <clears throat> Another point, uh, the fragmented aspect of um, the teaching or of certain pages when you read. Any page you pick up, uh, especially between Ascent and Dark Knight, and you analyze it and understand it, is a fragment of a whole is a piece, one aspect of a whole. So um, you need to be careful here. If you understood very well one specific point, if we work together and understood very well one point, you need to replace this point in the entire structure. So the analysis is important. We do a lot of, uh, we, we analyze what he says, we go word by word what he's saying, it can give you a certain satisfaction of understanding one point or an area or an, a stage of growth, but you need to be very careful that this vision is only fragmented. It's only one piece and you need to remember the rest of the, um, the journey, the rest of the teaching uh, and so forth. This is why <clears throat> it is uh, very important always when you read a text uh, to ask yourself different questions. Uh, be you know, before applying it to yourself, of course, I, I advise to be very prudent here, but before, uh, it's important to, to see what he's talking about, uh, what stage of growth he's talking about before rushing to conclusions. Um, can, is what he's saying, uh, can, can what he's saying be perceived by us? As I said earlier on, some things that he describes in a spiritual canticle uh, uh, and living flame are not necessarily perceived. So the confusion can, 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 uh, can appear here. So you need to ask yourself, is it necessarily perceived the way he's describing it? Because if he describes things that are occurring in our spirit, between our spirit and God, that's not perceived. That's just to be believed. You see, to be believed. Uh, okay. So can I acknowledge, can I recognize the stage? Uh, can, do I feel, uh, or I'm, I'm, uh, am I supposed to feel it? Um, uh, uh, does it have to be felt and, and so forth? Now, another point also, now I'm moving. Um, this is the fragmented uh, aspect and how um, it, it, uh, it should be um, handled. Sean? Yes, please go ahead. Sorry, before you continue, when you say 
uh, it has to be believed in the sense that we lean on his his expertise, his being a spiritual master, his knowledge and authority, so to speak, because it's it's almost like you know what are you basing the belief on? It's it's so it's it comes from him being the doctor of the church of having been acknowledged by the church of having a true right doctrine. Mm -hmm. Am I right? Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, yeah. We we lean on what he says uh, because we have we believe what, that what he says is 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 the truth, uh, even though we might not have the experience of it. This is what Therese, they asked Therese this question, and mm -hmm. she says it throughout her life, no? Mm -hmm. uh, she says, as, as much as people wanted to feel and see God, I didn't want. So it's the same proportion, but I didn't. They wanted, I didn't want. So I'm on the, the 180 degrees there. But, yeah, so that's corroborating on that side, but on the side of what he says happening somewhere where we can't see it, we have to trust that either he in some way saw it or, or oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean? he received the grace, he received the grace, uh, an explicit grace to understand and to explain things that are beyond our perception. Let us put it this way. He received the grace, there is a clear grace when uh, even in the document uh, declaring him doctor of the church, 1926, if I'm not wrong, uh, the Pope says, we acknowledge uh, the presence of a wisdom that is beyond the, the human wisdom. This is a divine wisdom. Uh, there are graces received, and this is the quality of any doctor of the church. Uh, it's not receiving the grace. That would be the saint only. But the doctor is not only a saint, but he, he or she receives two more graces. One is to understand, to understand the grace. And three especially doctors in spiritual life, like John of the Cross, Teresa of Avila, St. Therese, uh, Catherine, Catherine of Siena. So to understand the grace and to explain it. So you need two more graces. And these two more graces are, I would say, the specificity of the doctor in spiritual uh, life or mystic doctor, like John of the Cross, Teresa of Avila, St. Therese. Uh, they have in abundance in certain areas. They, you can't cover everything, but a lot already we have, they have in abundance these two uh, graces. So these two graces, we lean on them not to see and feel, and, uh, but just to understand and believe that this is happening deep inside, which is the initial grace. So you can have a person who has everything, but is not aware of it. It's as surprising as it can be. Some bits and pieces, yes, uh, the person goes through. Uh, if the, you follow the person, yes, you can discern certain things as a spiritual director. But the person it's herself or himself not doesn't necessarily understand everything. Of course, far from that. So um, it, it, this is what Therese says. She says, I prayed the Lord. When she reads John of the Cross at the age of 17, she says, I, I prayed that all what he says becomes real in me. Toward the end of her life, they ask her, well, what about this? You, because she says she doesn't feel anything. She's uh, in, a, in a difficult, uh, she goes going under a difficult trial and so forth. So she said, well, what is, what is all about all, all what you sing in your poems? And uh, she said, it doesn't, I, I, I sing what I believe, what I want to believe. I sing what I want to believe, which means I... Um, I, uh, and she adds in other place that what is what matters is that it is really happening in me, but to feel it, no. She says, I have a, a great peace, a very deep peace, but not nothing more than that. And she adds, I know that we cannot see that. We cannot see uh, God. So, yes, we believe that what he says is true because he offers... Um, incredible explanations of the participation into God's life, God's being and God's operations, which is like when you read them, it's like, wow, is this possible? And he says, yes, it is possible. And he describes it. But this description is of something that is deep, deep, deep in us. And we don't necessarily uh, feel it or sense it. Despite all our desires, it's not the case. Okay. Thank you. Yes.
I hope I, I answered you, your, your question. Yeah, no, absolutely. So, <clears throat> um, thank you for your question. Um, I don't always, uh, can I can't always see you because I'm looking at my notes. Uh, so if you have a question, please grab your mic. Otherwise, I won't be able uh, to notice that you want to talk. Thank you. <clears throat> so the advantages of uh, such uh, study uh, of St. John of the Cross, reading and studying, um, I would say he is the master of discernment. Uh, he is the master of discernment. Um, especially this this point, no, what is happening in the spirit, what is happening uh, in the sense and um, uh, the mind, the conscious mind, uh, the distinguishing between the two, understanding the difference between the two. Uh, otherwise, it's a big mess. Um, and we talked about this uh, extensively uh, on the consolations and, and how <clears throat> his understanding of consolations and uh, this um, desolations um, is, is uh, unique and has to be taken into consideration. This is what I call the second level of uh, discernment. We do not discern between a good thing and a bad thing. Uh, we discern between two good things. One is a, a fake good thing, but we don't see it. And the other one is a real good thing. And also the other point, which is uh, discerning between uh, feeling and not feeling, sensing or not sensing, that's fundamental. He's the master of discernment. He is the great master of spiritual theology. I I um, I know it could be a bit harsh for for some people, but I consider that first we need to understand him properly, which is not very common, unfortunately. Uh, I can talk about this another day, um, but um, he is the great master in spiritual theology. Um, um, I would find it a bit odd not to uh, make an effort to understand him and then claim that. Uh, somebody is specialized in spiritual theology. I would find it a bit difficult with all due respect, of course, to all other spiritualities. <clears throat> uh, as we just said, um, uh, answering your question, um, he has this, uh, uh, these two uh, other graces to understand and to explain or describe uh, what is happening deep inside of us which is something of another world. It's like he, he uh, God gave him binoculars or a microscope to see things, and then he gave back the binoculars. And he wrote what he wrote, and then we are left with the account. So we need to believe, <clears throat> uh, of course. Uh, not to believe that we are there or, already. Be careful. Uh, that's We go back to the, the first uh, pitfall. Okay. <clears throat> But this is one of the advantages of, of studying John of the Cross is to, to have these binoculars at a certain point to be able to see what God uh, might be doing deep and then use the tools of discernment to see um, can we uh, sort of uh, know uh, if the person is um, there or not, advancing or not, and so forth. Uh, remember that the function of spiritual direction is not to tell you where you are, but rather to tell you what to do right now where you are. You see, <clears throat> we don't want to inflate the spiritual ego also. So we, we are just uh, helping the person. Uh, so rem remember that. Now, <clears throat> one last point, and, and might take uh, a little bit of uh, more time, uh, which corresponds to where we are right now um, in the course. So we are not at the beginning of the course, even though this video will be placed at the beginning of the course. We are in dark night of the spirit. <clears throat> and uh, let me talk a little bit about the particular case of the uh, dark night of the spirit, which um, has to be considered the heart of his doctrine. Uh, if um, we want the rest, uh, spiritual uh, canticle and living flame, and we want to sort of shortcut uh, the dark night, well, then what is uh, the point? Um, he is the doctor of uh, the nights. The night means purification of the sense and the spirit, but more so uh, the spirit, because that's the core of the um, uh, purification. <laughs> um, just for you to know, uh, till today, we don't have uh, um, an ecclesial, ecclesial comes from ch church, uh, uh, reception of uh, the night. Mm. Uh, and by that, I mean, we don't have an official uh, recognition, 
even though he is recognized as doctor of the church, but on a practical level and the teaching of theology, we are far, far, far from that. It doesn't mean that what he's teaching is wrong. It means that we need to progress until we reach that um, level of integration. So the do his teaching on the night is not yet uh, fully received. And this leads me to the following point, all this under the uh, particular case of the night. No, this is one my last point and the advantages of uh, the, the use you can make of this course, which is the particular case of the night. <clears throat> might have later on other things but i will stop after that one um, this will lead us to uh, a second sub point which is the uh, the night being constituting a major difficulty in uh, his teaching uh, as we uh, saw together in the previous uh, videos uh, when i was uh, addressing the dark knight book one and especially book two um, <clears throat> I did mention that uh, many people, uh, respectable people, uh, theologians, uh, very known theologians and so forth, consider that um, it's not for everybody. So it raises, of course, huge uh, questions. Uh, why uh, uh, the dark night of the spirit constitutes a major difficulty while it's the heart of his teaching? Um, first, because his description uh, of it is frightening. Uh, you don't find something similar in St. Therese, Therese of, uh, of Avila. You find a little bit similar in St. Therese, but not in what we classically call the trial of faith, but the previous years from 88 till 92. Uh, these years have to be studied. We need two, three, four, five PhDs just on this. Uh, so I hope that one day uh, some uh, young men or women will dedicate their energy on making a PhDs on the the uh, is this period on how between uh, 1888 when she enters more or less in Carmel and by the end of 1892 Saint Teresa of the Child Jesus goes through the night but uh, she she never read the night from Saint John of the Cross so she gets it from another way another um, source which is simply Isaiah 53 and the Holy Faith uh, the Holy Face of the Lord. Her letters should be studied. Her letters to Celine should be studied. So uh, back again to what I was saying. His description of the night is uh, frightening. So of course it dissuades a lot of people. Of course it, it, is, it needs a little bit of uh, psychological strength in order to go through that on a minimum of mental balance also. Otherwise it could be, uh, it could threaten the uh, mental balance of, of the person. Um, the second sub sub point is that many refuse uh, or reject the night, uh, maybe because they haven't been through similar thing or they couldn't read properly what it meant, uh, what this purification means and how um, to what it corresponds, either in the gospel or in their own life. Uh, remember that in Trees of Avila it doesn't appear clearly. There are some sufferings and descriptions. There are one or two studies on the issue. But Trees of Avila does seem to acknowledge something similar to the night. But there is certainly. So there is a difference between what you feel, what you go through and how you express it and, and uh, what you really say and write about. So sometimes you don't want to write about that even though you went through a lot of uh, suffering. <clears throat> Uh, one of the reasons also of the major difficulty is that we don't see how what it looks like, um, uh, as I said, in the gospel, in the general teaching of, of the church, we have we find dif great difficulty to classify uh, the night. Uh, <clears throat> um, I did mention uh, center as of the child Jesus, so I won't repeat it again. Uh, and in this sense, um, it is fundamental. So if St. Therese, who, whose uh, way is for everybody, the common way, as she calls it, um, and uh, even for the weakest uh, of, of the persons, weakest, um, I mean, virtue-wise and so forth, she says, um, my way is for everybody, way for, to holiness, toward holiness. So if this is her way, I don't see why the Dark Knight 
of the spirit of this deep purification would it uh, be useful to a majority of us maybe not all but the majority of us now the final point uh, regarding this major difficulty is we don't see the connection uh, between it and the gospel <clears throat> in fact you find me speaking a lot, uh, especially when I, I address this book, second book of Dark Knight, talking about Peter. Peter as um, the archetype of the uh, follower, Jesus follower, and what he has to go through during the Passion. So I see personally, as Therese saw it, that Jesus' Passion, and all the saints went through that uh, to receive this Jesus' Passion, to make it um, one's... <clears throat> Um, to, so this means that in order to understand the dark night of the spirit, we need to uh, look at Jesus' passion, not from Jesus' point of view, but from Peter's point of view, from the disciple, from Jesus' follower point of view. I do explain this, I won't go back to it, but this, for me, in my eyes, is fundamental, and this is the reason why I do mention it. So you might say, well, you're not just reading word by word, you're adding a little bit to the text. Well, because it's a major difficulty. Mm -hmm. the, the teaching on the, the night is a major difficulty, and it would be a pity if uh, we continue not to see the connection between it and the gospel, uh, because for me, this is fundamental. Um, if, if we drop the passion of the Lord, there is no gospel. The, big, uh, the, the redemption is not happening. Uh, and if we drop the dark night, which is living the passion, um, receiving the passion from the Lord, his love and our purification and so forth, well, then this is not happening. So what's the point of being Christian? You see, uh, yeah, I would go that far. Um, now, uh, another issue, uh, why uh, for the particular case of the Dark Knight, uh, I, di I did mention that, <clears throat> and this also is a problem in the reading of St. John of the Cross, is all the uh, bad uses of the Dark Knight of the Spirit. Um, it's very trendy, as I said, uh, from already various decades. Everything is a night, uh, the dark night of the people, the dark night of this. Anything that is dark um, is coined dark night, while, as you can see, the dark night is not has its light and has its depth and meaning. So it's not just something that is empty. It has uh, another dimension to it. I send you back to uh, the entire... Uh, book of um, uh, the, dark, the Dark Knight of the Spirit. So the uh, funny interpretations of the Dark Knight, which had not, have nothing to do with the text itself, um, very easy generalizations. Sometimes we just take something from a word or a paragraph from John of the Cross and we make a, out of it a book or a teaching, which is sad. Um, uh, not to mention the, the incorrect um, uh, uses of the, the Dark Knight, uh, when some people say we can go forth and come back again, and then go forth and then come back again, and so forth. Um, if we really uh, read the Engine of the Cross, we find that this is a bit, um, shows a lack of understanding what is to go forth, um, uh, and so forth. So. Any difficulty, any perplexity often is today coined as a dark night, which is a bit disappointing. Uh, you wish sometimes people would uh, read more often and understand properly uh, the dark night. That was uh, what I wanted to say about the spe specific case of the dark night. So conclusion of all this, <clears throat> please um, be careful when you follow this course. It has huge advantages, but uh, there are serious um, I would say uh, dangers in the sense that if we immediately apply on our life uh, without having this buffer of uh, the spiritual director, uh, this checkup with a, a, a knowledgeable, of course, a spiritual director who knows and doesn't rush also into conclusions, which also can happen. Um, <clears throat> we can all make mistakes, but it's, we hope we won't make that many. Uh, if possible, by God's will, uh, God's grace. So, uh, yeah, uh, be careful not to move from the text immediately uh, to yourself without um, reasonable uh, checkup and, and patience. So it is tiring. As you can see, we are following this course from uh, almost many years now. Uh, we are going at the rhythm of uh, weekly uh, recordings. Uh, so it takes time. Yes, it takes time. John of the Cross is not an easy author. I, I 
do my best to replace him, to make him be understood on a practical way. But please, please be careful how you use uh, this um, uh, course. Uh, his writings first, and, and of course, this course. <clears throat> so, um, any question before we uh, conclude? No? Okay. So, wishing you the best uh, in uh, watching this uh, course, this fabulous uh, course. Uh, you will never regret it because John of the Cross describes what God would like to achieve in us and it is simply incredible, incredible. Uh, so um, I really wish every Christian would read uh, John of the Cross, at least, as we said earlier on, to believe that this is the gift of God. Uh, this is what Jesus says to the Samaritan lady. He says, if you knew the gift of God and, and who is speaking to you. Um, so if we knew what Jesus wants to give us and who is Jesus, then it would change a lot. And I think that with a guide like St. John of the Cross, we are <clears throat> lifted up to such levels, such depth, uh, and it's simply incredible what God wants to give us. So thank you, God, for uh, giving all these graces to St. John of the Cross or to us through St. John of the Cross. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Thank you very much for your patience and until next time.